Check out these QR code luggage tags that I made with my laser engraver. They're very functional and you can make them too. So pretend you're driving home from the airport one day and you lose your luggage in a ditch. It's no worries at all. A stranger driving by can just pull over, scan your QR luggage code with their phone and reunite you with your precious cargo. The best part is you can kind of just try it out for yourself. No, go ahead and scan it with your phone and see what happens. If you want to try making this project for yourself, I'll have a link to the light burn files that I made down below. To make this project, all you need is a piece of 3mm plywood and a nylon strap, and I'll have the Amazon links down below if you want to buy the ones that I'm using here. Using QR codes and light burns really simple. If you're not familiar with how to use it, all you need to do is double click on the QR code. Then from there, you can change the raw content to whatever you need it to be. I already filled in the text and phone call format for the sample projects if you're following along with those. Now in the sample projects, I've included dummy phone numbers, so you'll want to replace those with your phone number, obviously. But there's a few little caveats that you have to keep in mind when you're formatting that phone number, and I'll get into those in a second. There's one really important detail when it comes to engraving QR codes on plywood. You need to make sure to make your engrave layer a little shallower than you're typically used to. A QR code scan works the best when it has a lot of contrast and there's a clean edge between the squares and the code and the empty space around them. Normally when I'm engraving on plywood, I have the laser speed set to 6,000 millimeters per minute and the power set to 40%. When I engrave the QR code, I dial the power setting down to 20% or half of what I normally use. For the cut layer, I have the speed set to 400 millimeters per minute and the power set to 70%. For the graphic and text engrave layer, I have the speed set to 6,000 millimeters per minute and the power set to 40%. And of course, you may need to adjust those settings based on your laser cutter. Before you send these tags off, I'd recommend that you would just take your phone out, scan the QR code and light burn, and just make sure that it's working like you expect it to. This will just help you save some time and materials. When you're ready to create a phone call tag, open the light burn project file and double click on the QR code. The QR code format to make a phone call is TEL colon and then your phone number. Make sure you add the country code to the beginning of your phone number. So if you live in the US, that's just the one. And if you're outside of the US, just add whatever your country's phone number code is. To be honest, I think the scan might work without the country code, but I prefer to add the plus and the country code just to be safe in case I'm traveling internationally. Once you've got that all set up, you can send it off to your laser engraver and then try scanning it with your phone and see if it works. Creating a scan to send text message code is really similar to how you do the phone call QR code. The phone number part stays the same, but you can change the default message that someone will send you when they scan the QR code. And here's the format you'll need to use. It's SMS TO colon, the phone number, colon, and then the message. You'll see that I have the message set to, hey, I found your luggage when someone texts you. If you end up changing the message that gets sent to something else, just make sure you don't make it too long. The squares in the QR code are gonna get smaller and smaller the longer your message gets. There's gonna come a point where the squares in the QR code will just get too small for your phone's camera to pick up on. Once you've changed the phone number to yours, you can send it to your cutter, Scan it, try it out, and see how it works. Something weird that I've run into as I've been working on this project and doing a lot of test scans with my iPhone is that it can tend to bug out the new message screen and it won't close. The way I've gotten around this is by using a third-party app simply called QR Code to do all my test scanning. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. It's just what I've been using and I've been happy with it. And I'll have a link to that app in the description down below. Now, these tags don't really weigh a whole lot if you cut them out on the three millimeter plywood like I did. I made all of the tags symmetrical, so you can cut out two of them, glue them back to back, and give them a little extra mass. If you wanna make the tag even chunkier, you can take the tag that you're working on, delete all the graphics and the QR code from it, and then cut that out, sandwich it between the other two tags, and then you'll have a tag that's almost a centimeter thick. I guess there's no real upper limit to how thick you want to make your luggage tags. I mean, heck, if you had the time and the materials, you could make them 20 layers deep, and then you would just have the ultimate tag thing. Anyways, I've only gone over how you can make these tags on hobby 3mm plywood. There's nothing stopping you from trying to make them on other materials like leather, MDF, maybe acrylic. Let me know if you end up using some other material for this project. I'm kind of curious to know what you did. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.